God Hits. I want to thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, as I've been telling y'all, I was going to be dropping in these little quick, quick, quick words that God had been giving me. Now, last week, you know that we had the Overwhelmed with the Weight series. If you have not checked that out, you can get the entire series in the free downloadable ebook right beneath this episode. There's a link below and there'll be a link at the end of this episode on the screen. You can click the screen and get it if you want it. And I just wanted to tell you guys something. Keep pushing through. I'm going to be talking really quickly about this subject, but I want you to keep going. I think it's important for me to say this. Keep going and pursuing the things that God wants you to pursue. Now, what I want to talk to you about really briefly today is something that I read about the Lord that really stuck out to me. In Luke chapter nine, verse 18, it says once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say that I am? Another version says one day Jesus left the crowds to pray alone. Only his disciples were with him and he asked them, who do people say that I am? Now I'm going to tell you one more. It says one day as Jesus was praying in private and the disciples were with him, he questioned them, who do the crowds say that I am? Now, I'm not focused on the part about who does the crowd say that I am. I'm focused on the part about Jesus praying alone. This is what I want you to understand. And this is the way I was interpreting it. Now, I want to be clear. I want you to go and read it, but read before it and after for context. And you ask the Holy Spirit to confirm to you what it means for you. I just wanted to share this tidbit with you. One of the things that I have been seeing right now and something that I have often experienced is that there is an overstimulation and there's an oversaturation of stuff that we intake. I was just talking to a friend about this last night. There are a lot of things that we happen to encounter the way the world is set up right now. And I truly do not believe that it is God's intention for us to take in so much information and we do not separate ourselves to go and do as the scripture says to go and pray alone. I want you guys to understand something. Having all of this access that we have, that can often be a gift and a curse. It might be a thing that can be helpful at times, but it often turns into a crutch because the basis of it is often designed to throw us off and distract us from pure connection with the Lord, with the Lord, with with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, with God. That often that often disconnects us. And what happens is it becomes the actual substitute for the time when we should be connecting with the Lord. We could spend so much time on YouTube or so much time talking to people or interacting with things. And we're really not stopping to pray alone to be with God. One thing that I am learning is that the only thing that really ultimately gives me peace is just knowing that. I have taken the time that I need to really develop a pure relationship with the Lord. And this is something that people try to get a cheat code on. Now, I'm going to tell you something and a lot of people are not going to like it, but it's the truth. And I know it's not a fun fact that we want to hear, but the closer you get to God and the more you take time to spend with him alone, the more people are going to tell you that they will try to attack you in that area. They will say that you are not who you think you are spiritually. You're this person, you're that person, but that is what happens when an enemy sees that you keep getting closer to the things of God and you have more intel. You're able to see something a mile away versus seeing it when it's right up close and it's too late. You are able to discern on a greater level. You are able to understand on a greater level. So what I want you to do is understand that sometimes even like him, even like Jesus did in his scripture, he had friends around him and he had to ask him, okay, well, who do they, who do they say that I am? He had people around him, but he still knew how to pray alone. I want you to know how to pray alone. Blaze the trail between you and the Lord with just you and him at the helm. Let God be the one to set the tone and the standard for you as you navigate in this space in your life right now. This is so important because as you go higher and as you walk into more of the things that God has set aside for you, you want to know what? You are going to see my God. Had I not set aside time to pray alone with the Lord for myself, 
this thing might have went right past me. I might have signed up for this thing and didn't even realize it's not what God wanted for me. And check this out. You're not relying on other people. You're relying on your personal relationship and you're alone time with God. So I want you to take this word and I want you to hold it close and I want you to hop to it as soon as possible. As soon as this get off, go and pray alone. Go figure out what that is going to look like for you. And you can say, oh girl, I've been praying for the Lord knows how long with me and God alone. Well, that's wonderful. Step it up some more. You never could have too much of God. Listen, they said too much of anything ain't good, but I tell you one thing, if I got to make sure most of my time is with the Lord, and if I have to be quiet before he throw me back out there in that world again, then I'd rather do that than sit there and be stuck up about it and not talk to God at all because I don't want to do too much. That is not something that I would encourage anybody to do. And it's not a posture I would encourage anybody to take. This is something that you have to realize. It's, it's I believe a long time, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me. I believe a long time, a long time in prayer with God is designed to bless you. I don't think it's designed to make you feel boredom. I don't think it's designed uh, to, to feel like a task and to feel like something you dread. It's supposed to be a place of comfort. It's supposed to be a place of encouragement and release. It is so important that you understand that at a basic level. Because once you really grab hold to why it is so important to understand the phases of the Lord and to operate in excellence and walk in alone time with him, that indeed is going to change the trajectory and it is going to change the way that you move and it's going to change how you come out of that alone time with God. You will find things that weren't clear before will be clearer and you will find that you will have an even greater desire to go to God first rather than last or when something is already in shambles. You will train yourself so much to know that you can trust in God and what you two talk about when it's just you and him that you're going to make that your lifestyle. And even if it used to be your lifestyle and you forgot, you'll go ahead and make sure you reset and get in that again. And if it's already who you've been, you're going to step it up even more because there's a beautiful comfort in knowing that God is exactly who he says he is and is nothing like knowing God for yourself. So that's just, well, that's what I will encourage you to do again at scripture. Ref, excuse me, scripture. Y'all, why am I talking so crazy? It's like the words just can't come out. The devil is a liar. The scripture reference is Luke chapter nine, verse 18, I believe. And make sure you believe you read before and you read after for context. So I hope that that helps somebody. Again, this is not a fancy, fluffy word, but it's a real word. And it's important in times like these because we have to know God for ourselves. On Wired to Inspire, I hope you are too.